I am never writing a SQL query again. So in today's video, we're going to create a vertical AI agent in Python that turns natural language into a query, which you can either get the query or you can execute it on your database. So in this video, I will walk you through the exact steps to create this production ready AI powered API from scratch and I'll explain why core API skills are essential if you want to work in AI, backend development or data engineering. So first, before we get into this, let's have a quick look at what it does and then we'll go and explain how it works and we'll get into the code. So first, briefly how it works. As you can see here, we have three terminal windows open. So the one here, this is the actual server, so the API server itself. We have in the middle just a, a terminal where I'm just essentially querying the or hitting the API endpoint. And then on here we have the psql database open so we have the database connection open here so we can just make sure that the queries that are bringing back actually give the right result so on here we have this running in the middle let's run a curl command so the curl command essentially is http request that's what this is doing sending a post request to our local host which is where our api is with the generate sql um, api endpoint because if we look at the code here we have two endpoints using fast api we have generate sql and we have execute sql so content type application json that's fine in your question you just put in the question here so how many customers with revenue over 1000 so if we send that in it will hit the api endpoint here and we see we get a return the sql is this here let's copy that and then there is there are no warnings so all good so if we now go over to a psql here which is connected to our actual database we can run this query boom and they see the count as three now i'm doing that just for testing purposes because actually what we can do instead is if we instead of generate if we have this here say execute because there's an execute sql endpoint as well we can then press enter here and that will go away and it will turn that into sql it will run that against your database and give you back the result in faster time than it took me to say it. So we can see here that it gives us the same SQL query, which is good. And then it gives us the rows count three, which is exactly the same as we had here. So that is it in action. As you can see, it's super straightforward. And for the code itself, it's like less than a hundred lines if you were to remove all the comments. So super simple. So let me go and show you briefly how this all works together. So we have our psql database now this is hosted on render completely for free which i'll show you how to do that and to add in dummy data so you can get started straight away so i have this psql database and whenever you want to interact with it you have to write some sql or some psql um, and then you have to query that against the database and then you get some response right problem here you need to know sql so that's why this vertical agent instead what it does is you give it natural language it will then go to OpenAI, I'll draw these arrows in here, we'll go back to them in a sec, it goes to the OpenAI API, turns that into SQL, given a specific system prompt and your database, etc. That SQL then can, for execute, get sent to here to then run, to then bring it back and give you this. So this is the flow for execute. Now, just for generate, we can just cut that bit off here. Basically, OpenAI then turns it into SQL and gives you it back. So, for example, what we were saying is, you know, how many customers are driving you over a thousand, and it brings back SQL. So it doesn't have to go and actually query the database. But the way that it does this is that it's connected up to get your schema, etc. So let's quickly show you how to set up Render, and then we'll get into the code. So <clears throat> on Render here. Render, if you go to render.com, they say it's your fastest route to production, which honestly really is. One click, you have website, one click, you have database, um, and you can get free versions, which I have here. So if we go to AI SQL agent, for you, you're going to want to create your first project, add new, Postgres DB, and then you'll get this up here. Move me back. And then you just give it a name, scroll down, make sure it's on free create database and boom that's you now you can only have one free database per workspace so i already have mine here ai sql agent and bam there you go and so you can connect it um, from here copy that or external you can copy this or you can actually go straight from renders specific uh, terminal but we're just going to use the standard one here which is that to connect so if you copy that you'll be able to open this instance up additionally you have all your connections here which we'll get to soon so 
that would be to open this up here um, for the PSQL you would clear that you would just write PSQL paste that in Whoops. don't share this with anyone I'm going to destroy it after this video so don't worry about it um, and then boom you're in and so now we can forward slash backslash there we go backslash dt and we can see what is inside the table so very cool let's uh, close that one down though so we can see a bit better so before we start implementing fast api pydantic and open ai let me first say that when i was creating this i was finding it a nightmare i was trying to copy and paste from chat gpt i was trying to use documentation i was trying to use row code and it was honestly just getting me into a hole because i didn't understand fast api and so it took me ages to learn if i could go back in time i would a hundred percent go and learn the building apis in python on data camp this skill track it walks you through their entire back-end workflow from python fundamentals introduction to api fast apis to building full fast api projects now inside here you get your introduction to python so you can actually understand the language that you're going to be using you can work with actual APIs, learn how to leverage HTTP requests, etc. And then you learn the fundamentals of Fast API, which is an absolute industry standard right now. Building, validating, and testing JSON endpoints. Additionally, you get your capstone project, so you're pulling real data from a real world situation to create a real world solution. So why the account works it is this structured step-by-step -step learning project. It has hands-on coding in every single course and every single module. And finally, a project that you can show off. And again, there isn't any vendor lock-in. If you see me on the channel, I'm always moaning about vendor lock-in. There is absolutely none here. And let me just quickly say that, see this fast API module? This clear things up that I was stuck on for hours and minutes. So if you want to learn APIs properly, go and check out building APIs in Python on DataCamp. Link will be in the description below. And a quick honorable mention, Developing AI applications, I've also been doing this one. Really good for actually leveraging how to create proper vertical AI agents and AI applications. So anyway, back into the code. So the first thing we want to do is import a bunch of stuff, pretty much, right? You'll see how these are used shortly, but essentially we're importing operating system, the system dot n so that we can bring in API keys typing fast API and Pydantic so that we can implement the API. This is so we can then connect to our database. This is so we can get it to OpenAI. And then this is so that we can run it as an actual API service as opposed to just a script in Python. So number one, we are going to set up and configure our environment. So we load .env. Essentially, when you have API keys and stuff, I'll show you them because I'm going to delete them afterwards. But you keep them here in this .env file. Why? Because you want it to be consistent. .env, that file is hidden. So if you were trying to upload this to say a GitHub repo, this would be a hidden file. It wouldn't get pushed up to GitHub, right? But the reason we have them in here and don't just, because normally what you can do is export and then you say like database URL equals blah, 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 right? The problem there is that then sets it for your entire system, not just this project. So that's why we use that. And then we have OpenAI API key, database URL, and so we're getting those environment variables. And if we don't, print it out. And then we initiate here, <coughs> OpenAI database metadata and the engine. So now that we have everything configured and set up, ready to go, the next thing we want to do is set up our Pydantic data models. Now think of these like schemas for your API models. So we have here query request, and that is going to be a question, just a string. The query response will be a SQL string, so it will be a string, but we'll call it SQL, and then there'll be an optional warning. An execute response, SQL, string again, and then the rows, so the actual response itself. And so these here, you can you can amend them as needed. As you can see, they map to, for example, this here, so SQL, and then this is the string, and then warning empty, same as this here. So that's our models for our API responses. Now, the fast API app lifecycle, so basically events for starting and disconnecting from the database. So for the helper functions, this first one finds the tables, this next one gets the schema for them, and then the next one here, this generates the SQL. So as you can see, this one specifically, we have a prompt. So you're a helpful assistant that generates SQL queries, given this table and its columns 
and the question produce only the SQL query, no explanation. And now this wrapper here, the first thing when I was kind of coming up with this idea and making this, I was thinking, why would you want to use something like this? Why would you want to use some wrapper, right, for OpenAI? I can't just use the ChatGPT model. But then that's the problem, is it's this repetition of things. So, for example, here, you would have to pass in the table, the, the schema. You'd have to then pass in this thing of, like, only produce a SQL query, etc. So, although these things could often seem like wrappers, because I find it all the time with autonomous agents, you know, things like Manus, right? People are like, it's amazing. I'm like, it's just a wrapper. But wrappers are what make the tools products, essentially, right? Think of it like that. So anyway, here we have a prompt, and then we have the response from the model. So we have the OpenAI client open up. We choose a model. We choose the role, content, temperature. We set the temperature to zero so that it's uh, deterministic, essentially, um, so that basically it gives you the right response. It doesn't try to be creative. And then we have a max tokens, which again, you can change. And then it returns that response. So next up, the big bit, or the main part here, which is the API endpoints. So we're creating two API endpoints here. The first one is generate SQL, and the second one is execute SQL. So let's just kind of look at them a little bit here. So this sets up the uh, API endpoint, and then this is the function that essentially it runs. So we have a try and accept, so we'll try this, otherwise, Throw this error, you can see it's a 500 error for HTTP exception. And inside here, we set the schema and then we literally just assign SQL to generate the SQL, which is this helper function here. So basically, this generate SQL just runs this here, given the user input from the API. So as you can see here, the response model, query response, um, uh, sorry, payload, query request, and that is the payload that's coming from the user. So that's the natural language there. So for the execute SQL function here, again, we have the endpoint, so execute SQL, and then we have the payload from the user, which is query request, passing into this function, try accept, and it's pretty much the same as generate SQL, where we have just that, but it's the same and that's the same. So essentially create the SQL query. We now have SQL, which is the query. We want to then make sure that it's a select so that it can read only. Just a little bit here in for kind of safety, because you don't want... This is just a temporary database. It's all made up. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to make this a production ready one, you don't want it to be able to insert stuff. You don't want it to be able to change things. You just want it to be able to read. And that's what that enforces here. So the next thing here is we have our database instance and we want to fetch everything given this SQL query and return that as rows. And then we return that via this here where we return SQL as SQL and then the rows, the return rows, the value of the the result of the query is this here, and then that's how you get da, 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 where is it here? SQL and then rows. Bam. And then otherwise you raise an exception. And that is literally it. And then to run it here, you can run it using uh UVCall, so that's so you can run it like as an API, or you can just run it as a script. Um I'll cancel it here. There we go. So that's it off. If we run the curl command, see so fail to connect. You can simply run this just by Python tutorial full. There we go, because that's the name of it here. And bam, that's it up. You can then paste that in, and it'll hit the endpoint, and then it'll give us a response. Easy peasy, just like that. Now, if you don't have any data inside of your database, right, you've just set it up and render just like me here, right, and you have nothing in it, what you can do is you can run the init db. So this init db here, essentially what it does is, it can read more into the comments here, but essentially it initializes and seeds the table uh, tables, which means that it creates the data in the database. It creates the database inside it and then fills it up. So as for this .n file, we have our database URL. Now this here, to get it specifically, if we go to render, we can go to external database URL and you want to click show on that. And then we can copy it and we'll paste it in there. And for the OpenAI API key, if we just go to platform.openai.com, and then from here, let's close that down. You want to create a new secret key. My big head is in the way again. <laughs> Maybe I should do these faceless. Create new secret key, give it a name, click create key, and then bam, copy that. Now make sure you don't give it to anyone because if you do, people can then use it 
um, and then charge it. So for example, I'll have to delete this one because you've seen it. Let me move me back up. There we go. And so that's .env, that's what's then uh, read in using the load.env. Now if you want more information on how this actually works and how to set it up in more detail, I have this here, let me open preview. You have a setup guide marked down here, which goes from top to bottom, because as you can see, I'm actually running this inside a virtual environment, um, and I've installed these requirements here specifically, so that we can actually use these here. Entire code base is below, so you can get started today. Now, this might look simple, but this is how modern tools are being built. Agents are like wrappers around large language models generally, and API is the glue which connects these AIs to these applications. And your job is to structure the logic prompts and outputs in code. And so you could extend this easily by adding authentication, automating it, pulling it into NA10 maybe, or chain it with other tools like Langchain and Pinecone to actually get a full application built out. Now, if you want to work with AI agents, if you want to build APIs, then building with fast APIs is, in my opinion, the best way to do it. Go and check out the building APIs in Python. Link will be in the description below. It is the best track on data camp for building APIs in Python. And it's the fastest way to go from zero to a real back-end engineer building stuff that matters. So if you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.